Crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So this week we are going to be working on another Christmas project. So if you guys have been with me for the last couple years, you know that our local town has a Christmas market every year. And during that market they host crafting events. And I get the privilege of being able to host some crafting events to the public and it's so much fun. And so I've been working on some ideas for some of our projects. So I thought today I would show you one of the projects that we're going to be making. And it is these cute little wooden books. I call them a rustic Christmas book stack. And so they're just made out of wood and they're so much fun to make. So I hope you stick around for the tutorial and I'll show you exactly how to make them. But before we get there, you guys, I have to thank you. We are almost at 10,000 subscribers. In fact, when I actually post this video, maybe we'll be there. And I want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing. If by chance you're stopping by my channel and you haven't subscribed, please click on that little subscribe button down below and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. I try to do it every Friday. That's why we do it Inspiration Friday. So give me a second. I'm going to get my camera angle change and we are going to get making these cute little books. Okay, so let's get going on this project. And I made these cute little books. And this was kind of like my prototype that I made, you guys. Um, and this one has a Christmas story, Twas the Night Before Christmas, and White Christmas. And I just used some scrap pieces of wood. But I'm getting ready for a big um, Christmas festival in our local town. And so I am volunteering my time at a um, craft event where we will be making crafts and this is one of my projects so I thought it would be fun to show you guys what it takes to make these books. Now instead of using the thin pieces of wood on that one I got some two by sixes donated by our local um, lumber company Sierra Pacific and so I just so appreciated I've got to make up packets to make a hundred of these so I've got lots of good wood so I thought I'd put together a um, an example of them so I'm starting out with two by sixes I've got them cut eight inches long so we're gonna have two books that we're gonna put together for this I used my Cricut and I cut out the Nutcracker and a Christmas Carol. And these are an inch in, um, in height and then whatever dimension, whatever titles you guys like to do. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, you could absolutely write your titles on here. Um, I grabbed some of my um, paper um, from my stash and this is just one that's really cute. It says, you know, what child is this? And um, the holy, um, the, the holly and the joy. So just a Christmas print. I'm going to be using a, um, some, a sanding block. I just grabbed some little um, notions that I picked up. These are just decorative things that I picked up. Um, I've got a packet that's got some greens and pine cones and this cute little ornament I thought would be fun. I've got a plate with two paint brushes okay one paint brush is going to be used for some white paint that we're going to do the outsides of the wood and then one paint brush is going to be using Mod Podge and I've got some juke or some string that I'm going to use to add to mine and then I have a um, some scissors and then on the back counter I've got my heat gun warming up so let's go ahead and just get started with this project I'm going to move all of my supplies out of the way with the exception of my wood and my husband was sweet enough to cut these all up for me but what we need to do is we need to sand the edges a little bit. So I'm just going to run my um, sanding block around the edges. Um, and you guys absolutely could use a um, electric sander for this. I'm just trying to um, do this just like I'll be doing it down at our local crafting event. So I won't have the ability to have any of my um, power equipment down there or sanders 
So really all we're doing is just giving it a quick little sand just to get some of the rougher edges out. It doesn't need to be perfect at all, you guys. And you guys will notice I've got a piece of paper down just protecting my um, counter. Okay, just as easy as that. Nothing really um, drastic in the sanding, you guys. Okay, so we've got both pieces of wood ready to go. And the very first thing I want to do is I am going to paint the edges. Now, if I show you my original one, okay, I painted all the way around just the edges, okay? Because the top of the book we're gonna add some paper to and the bottom you're never gonna see, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and I like using these this Anita's acrylic paint, but you guys can use any paint you like. You can even use any color. It doesn't have to be white. Um, I just like the look of the white. And so all I'm gonna do is um, paint all around the edges, okay? And it can be a rough paint, you guys. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think sometimes, I'm using these foam brushes, and I find sometimes if I just pat on, um, sometimes that makes it just be a little bit quicker. But you know what, you guys, see how the wood grain is coming through that? I'm just gonna leave it. Um, I just think this is more of a rustic type um, Christmas um, um, decor, I guess you would say. Um, and so I'm just going to do this and I'm just going to get both of those painted up and I'll decide which side I want to um, put my title on that we're going to put the vinyl that I got. But see, as easy as that. I'm not really going to worry about the top at all because we're going to cover that up. Okay, and we'll just do the second one the same way. And this is another reason why I like these foam brushes is really it's just rubbing it on like that. Okay, just you paint as much as you guys want to paint. And this wood is not all perfect, but you know what? I just love how um, it shows the wood grain and it just makes it look real natural. Okay, so as easy as that. See how quick that was that I got those painted. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide which one that I want on top, and I think, I'm gonna go ahead and go with this one, okay? They're both the exact same size. What I'm gonna do is I am going to measure out, and I'm just going to, try to line this up so you guys can see it. Um, I'm gonna, I turn my paper upside down, okay? And I'm just gonna mark it off with a pen, okay? And then we're gonna cut it out, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some Mod Podge to add this to the top. Now, if you don't have Mod Podge, you could absolutely use glue. And for that matter, you guys, if you didn't want to put um, a decorative paper on the top, you could have just painted the top of yours, okay? So I am just going to, I want to see, I want that to be, I'm kind of looking at which edges is the smoothest here for my um, vinyl to go on, okay? So I'm just gonna do that. And now you guys, my edges are a little bit longer and that's perfectly fine because we're gonna sand around the edges, okay? So I'm just going to take my Mod Podge and I'm gonna paint the top of my block, okay? Just get a good coat of Mod Podge on it. Hmm. Just want to make sure my wood is a little rough and that is no problem. Okay, so I got a good coat on. I'm going to lay my Mod Podge there. Excuse me, I'm going to lay my paper on top of my Mod Podge. And then I'm just going to smooth it. Okay, I'm gonna let that one sit for a minute. Okay, and you guys can see I've got some edge there still. Okay, 
as soon as that dries, we're going to take the sanding block and we're going to sand around those edges. Okay? So we're done with the Mod Podge for now. Okay? And because I did a real thin coat of paint, my paint is basically all dry. Okay? Got a little bit on my fingers. I am going to, I've already weeded out my Nutcracker and my Christmas Carol. And I've already put some transfer tape on. Okay, so I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to grab my Gonna grab my burnishing tool, and you guys, I picked these up at Harbor Freight. Okay, I think my husband says it's for putting Bondo on. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I always like to remove mine backwards. Okay, so I'm gonna get my first one on. And the key here, you guys, is that paint needs to be dry. Okay. That's why I like doing a very, very thin, thin coat of the paint, okay? Sometimes, sometimes it's a little ornery. So this is a trick that I've learned, is if I pull backwards like this, I can get my vinyl to lay down. I'm probably rushing this just a little bit so I can get this done for you guys. My paint might just be a little bit still wet. But you just take your time. And I'm just using my finger and grabbing it as I come next to it. And of course I picked the longest title first, <laughs> but that's okay. You guys will get the gist of what I'm doing here. Makes me think as I'm trying to get to put together everything for this project next weekend, that I might be painting the edges for everybody first, <laughs> just to save time. So I've got a lot of people coming through for our event. Oops, I definitely still got some paint going on here. I'm gonna try going from the top. Sometimes if I go from the top and pull down, it works out really good too. And again, I've got some uneven wood but that's okay, because as far as I'm concerned, that's what adds character. Just about got it, you guys. And look at that. Okay? So we got the nutcracker all on, cute as cute can be. Okay? So I'm going to set the nutcracker off to the side. We're going to check our Mod Podge, and we've got a little bit of, just going to make sure that's on real good, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my sanding block around the edges, okay? And what that is going to do, you guys, is it's just going to give me the ability to tear off those edges really easy, okay? It also is taking off with this particular paper I'm using, it's taking off the edge of the paper, and so it's really making it, giving it a nice warm look. I'm gonna 
grab a little bit grittier grit of sanding block. See how that is just putting it right down. I just love how it gives that finish. Okay, so I have a nice finish on there now, and it looks really, really rustic. Okay, so let's brush off our area here a little bit. And now we are gonna add Christmas Carol onto the front of this one. Okay, now this is definitely drier than the last one, you guys. Oh, I sure do got paint on my hands today, you guys. <laughs> I've been busy, busy, busy trying to get ready for this event. I've got six different crafts that we're gonna be doing over the course of two weekends. So this is just one of them. And I've got all ages that come to the event to do crafting. And it's so fun because it's all free to the public and I just love it. You know, I get adults that want to craft. I get, um, the one that I thought was really fun um, a couple years ago is watching the dads bring their daughters into craft. It is, um, it's really fun watching, you know, that connection. And just the kids in general are so fun. They just, they love having the tools and the supplies and everything, and a lot of them, make things and they do them for gifts. So um, just I just love that our community does this and, um, and just the, the turnout is always great. So um, I'm so fortunate that I'm asked again to do it this year. So last year was an interesting year. Um, I did everything virtually and this year we're gonna be doing it live again. Um, with some recordings, um, you know, for people that, that don't feel comfortable coming down, but um, it'll be fun. Two years ago, our town broke the world record for the largest Christmas tree maze, and so we'll have our maze going again this year, so that'll be a lot of fun. So there we are, you guys. That one, see how much smoother that went on? Because my paint was drier, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my books together, okay? And then I'm gonna grab some juke or some string, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm not gonna worry about where the wording is on my, um, on my books. It kind of reminds me of um, back in the day, I guess you would say, when you used to see people with um, strings around their books, <laughs> carrying their books that way. So all I'm gonna do is wrap it around, okay? And then we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add some stuff to it, and it's gonna be as easy as that. Okay, I don't think I can make it one more time. Nope, Lisa didn't quite do her string enough. Okay, so all I'm going to do is tie it off. See if I can do this all by myself. Got it pretty tight. Okay. And then, you guys, I have got some of these little pieces that I just think are just cute as can be. I use these for all kinds of different Christmas crafts. And I'm just going to grab a few of those. I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to get a cute couple little pine cones out. And then I've also got this cute little ornament. So let me grab my glue gun. Okay. And I'm just going to put a good dab of glue right there. Okay. And then I'm just going to start adding. One more little piece, I think. And I just thought this guy was so cute. 
I'm quite sure how I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna undo him, because he's already tied. But I just thought, these are just things I picked up last year after Christmas. Um, and I'm just gonna bring him around. Add just a little bit of glue back there. just so the ornament stays in place. And as easy as that, you guys, there we have it. I will give you a close-up view of our cute little Christmas tree, excuse me, our cute little Christmas decor, the a Christmas carol and the nutcracker. So if any of my followers are local um, to the Pacific Northwest, next Saturday, we will be doing this as our craft event. So thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. And here's a close-up view of those cute little books we made, A Christmas Carol and The Nutcracker. I sure hope you enjoyed this tutorial on making these rustic Christmas book stacks. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for other DIY projects, make sure you check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com.